Hello and welcome to October. It's the start of another month, which means that today I answer more of your questions. Just like in the first video, we picked 10 questions because that's a nice orderly number that humans can get behind. Last month's was QA1, this is QA2, not to be confused with QE2, which is Queen Elizabeth II. Anyway, enough of the tittle-tattle, as my fellow YouTubers like to say, let's dive in, appropriate for this channel. The first question comes from JB who says, Lawrence, nice job on your vids. Thank you. There is a question as well. My question is, do you have a real job? And if so, what do you do? Greetings from Philly. Well, my real job is this job. And that has been the case now for about 17 months. I quit my day job working for a consulting slash consultancy firm in downtown Chicago at the very start of the pandemic. And you know, it was kind of a nerve wracking decision to take because here I am following through on a decision that had already been made before the pandemic even arose and sort of hoping that this risk would work. And thankfully, my channel has grown substantially during the pandemic. Actually, the day that I left that job downtown, I had 100,000 subscribers. And now I have close to 307,000, which is the population of Orlando. Can you tell that I obsess over this? All right, next up, Yellow Bug asks, did you do a shingles commercial? I did not do a shingles commercial. Um, however, recently I have been asked questions like this. Did you do such and such? Were you in this TV show? Which is really bizarre. But then, I, you know, I think about it and I think, I think people are just confusing me with Henry Cavill, which it, it's easy to do. No, wait, I've just read. This is all a reference to the fact that I had a weird neck rash in the last Q&A video. I did have a neck rash. It seemed to come on mid-production. I talked to my production team about it. We didn't know what we could do, so we just put it out as is. There really isn't an explanation for it. I do know the explanation isn't shingles. You know, um, I can confirm that categorically. Um, I think what happened is I scratched myself, but I did it wrong. And sometimes things like that can arise during the editing process. Years ago, I did a video and just before filming, I ate a marshmallow. And it was only during the edit that I noticed a little piece of it had been caught up in my beard. And I looked very stupid, but it was the whole video. And you had to have eagle eyes to even realize it was there. But I noticed straight away. So I genuinely contemplated for hours whether or not to put the video out. And then I just thought, well, if you can't take me at my worst, you don't deserve me in a vest. Is that, that's not the phrase, but it's close. close. Amanda asks, what editing program do you use? And it's all magic. I just click my fingers and it's done. If only that were the case. I use a little program called Adobe Premiere Pro and anybody who's looking to get into film editing, there is a steep learning curve with this. I've been using it for about four years and I'm still learning things I didn't know about the program. And so if you intend to start using this either as a hobbyist or a video maker of some kind, just know that at the beginning, it's bloody hard. I've learned all of the various editing processes through trial and error and also by watching videos on YouTube. In fact, that's largely what I'd recommend. The next question comes from Linda who asks, have you heard of the Centralia coal mine in Pennsylvania? Of course, not to be confused with the one in Washington state. I actually became aware of this coal mine about a year ago when I watched a documentary about it, in which a coal mine fire has been burning underground since the 60s. And because of that, the population of Centralia has been rapidly decreasing in that time. And I seem to remember that in the past decade, state and local officials reached a deal with the remaining local residents, and I think it was something like six or seven of them, in which those remaining residents are allowed to live there until they die, at which time the rights to their houses will be taken through eminent domain and the population of the borough will then be zero. It's really weird stuff. And the next question comes from Jen, who asks, could you please let me know when you were in Ohio? I must have missed it. I've been a subscriber since about 2019. The last time I was in Ohio was 2017 when I visited Cincinnati. This was back in the day when I was not such a proficient filmmaker. And also I filmed most of it on my phone. But I seem to remember doing a video about the Ohio River. I also got to visit the Air Force Museum in Dayton. That was phenomenal. But for the most part, my visits to Ohio have mostly taken in the west portion of the state, apart from the time that we drove through it in order to get to Pennsylvania. Oh, and I've just remembered one other time. Back in the day, when I lived in Indiana, and Indiana still outlawed the sale of alcohol on Sundays, my wife and I made the short journey from Fort Wayne to a small gas station in Ohio just to pick up some beers. We were 
classy back then. All right, this next question comes from Ms. M, who asks, Lawrence, have you photographed the Capitol building in Boise, Idaho? She's a classic beauty with a recently real gold gilded eagle on top. Well, as it happens, I have. I've even walked around the Capitol building in Boise, and it sure is a beautiful little building. And I was able to photograph it in a very pleasing manner, much further away from the downtown area. In fact, come to think of it, I also photographed it from the top of Table Rock. So the Capitol building in Boise might be top of the list when it comes to Capitol buildings that I photographed from the most angles. This has to be a massive source of pride for the people of Idaho. In a connected question, CJ Hansen asks, where in Utah and Idaho did you visit? And it's appropriate that you would put both states in the same question because I visited them on the same trip. As it happens, I've visited Idaho on three occasions, all of which were business trips that took place during my time at that previous job. And I visited not only Boise, but Coeur d'Alene, Idaho Falls. And from Idaho Falls, I took a kind of bus all the way to Salt Lake City, where I have ancestors who are buried there. And so I thought I'd go and pay respects to the people that I was very loosely related. And uh, they seemed to appreciate that. They were dead, but I still got a good vibe. And on the theme of visiting capital cities, Jonna asks, what about District of Columbia? Are you going there? Will you have a picture taken in front of the US Capitol? And two years ago, I did indeed get the chance to visit Washington DC. And I think in doing so, I became the first YouTuber in history to do a comedy fall in front of the Capitol building. And I really liked Washington DC, especially the mall. You know, I got to see the bit where Forrest and Jenny reunite. That was touching. And I also loved all of the museums that surrounded it. I say all, I only got to visit three, but you know, that that's a good sample size. If those three were good, the rest of them were probably decent. Uh, one interesting thing that I noticed in Washington DC is that you have a million years to cross the road. Nowhere else in America have I seen a pedestrian crossing that starts at 60 seconds. I imagine it's a pain for the cars, but Washington DC seems to me more of a pedestrian city in many ways. It's probably why they've got those scooters that I nearly got killed by. All right, next question comes from Pamela who asks, are you visiting the States and not the territories? You know, I get this question quite a lot and I'm not really sure where the perception comes from that I have no interest in visiting the territories. In fact, I already have a property in the US Virgin Islands. That's a lie. But I would like to visit there because did you know that the US Virgin Islands is the only place under US jurisdiction where they drive on the left? That's right, and it's really weird because most of the vehicles are actually imported from the United States. So the steering wheel's on the left and they drive on the left. But in my previous job, I led calls with representatives from not just the 50 states, but the US Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico, Guam, American Samoa, and the Northern Mariana Islands. All that to say, yes, I would be interested in visiting those places if the right opportunity presented itself. And finally, Puck Robin One, as well as John, ask, have you visited America's neighbor, Canada, yet? If so, what did you think? And here's the truth. I've sort of visited Canada. I visited Canada in the same way that I visited Dallas. That's to say I've been to an airport. Which airport was it? It was the airport in Toronto. And as I've said before on this channel, that does not count as an official visit. But I did hear actual Canadian people speak actual Canadian, and it was a beautiful sound, you know. Uh, one that I'd love to replicate, but in a more meaningful capacity by visiting Toronto for real or any other place in Canada. Not any other place. I don't want to go to one of those barren places that are near the North Pole without a shirt and winter wear. But I think sometimes I get so bogged down in this fascination with visiting all of the United States and territories, that Canada gets put to the back burner, even though I'm not really that far from the border. But anyone who knows me knows that I've always had a kind of fascination with tall structures, partly because I am one. And growing up, I just flick through my books and marvel at the Empire State Building, the Sears Tower, and then the CN Tower. And I suppose a bucket list wish was checked off that day at the airport because I could very vaguely see the CN Tower. And just like in all of the books and documentaries, it was very tall and spiky. That's it for this episode. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions for me that I can answer in November. I'm Lawrence Brown. You can follow me on Twitter at Lost in the Pond US. And do not forget to subscribe to my channel so that my videos don't get lost in the pond. A CN Tower size shout out to my patrons who make these videos possible. If you would like to become a patron of Lost in the Pond, you can do so today at patreon.com slash lost in the pond. Until the next video, goodbye.